Welcome to the Clive Barker Podcast, and part 18 of our Dungeons & Dragons game, Jericho Squad 77, set in the capital city of Isordorex in the Second Dominion. Squad 77 makes their way home to try to figure out what's happened to their kidnapped comrades, Jonathan and Ralph. Apparently here, last time we fought and defeated an aspect of the god, the hot hand of the unbeheld. I sure hope we never have to do that again. And we also killed Cassius Briar for good. Darthur City is a ghost town, but why? After the destruction of Midian, after the unraveling of the fugue, after the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions, the Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. Squad 77, fresh from their fight on the road with the dragon, the wings of Hepexamendios, uh, traveled to Durther City to find uh, it's a ghost town. And um, a few remaining of the righteous were left, uh, and while battling those creatures, Squad 78 approached with their enemies in disguise, uh, Cassius Briar and the massive Nelianak Hand of the Unbeheld. Uh, they were defeated, but not before the mysterious sorcerer Terence disappeared with Ralph and Jonathan Livingston Seagull. And so that's where we're at. Uh, you guys are um, have not gone to sleep yet. Um, Lori, I mean Zoe, was uh, was identifying everything, and that's all. That part's all been done, and and those things have been divvied out. But um, do you? Is there anything that you guys wanted to do uh, during that? time while she was identifying stuff because she probably spent a good hour doing that um can i attune to my dagger of venom uh yeah yeah you can do that okay i took the dagger of venom from the loot yes so you're so that's what uh Trudovir is spending his hour doing that uh what do you, any of you guys want to do anything else during your hour just to remind you, you're, you've got a, a dead uh, enemy, Cassius Briar, there, and you've already searched him. You have an unconscious hand of the unbeheld, and you've searched him. I don't really have anything I can tie him up with. That is a good idea, though. <laughs> well, apparently I couldn't talk. I'm meditating. Well, I mean, I think we were all thinking it. <laughs> okay, uh, Richard? I can go over and tie him up. Okay, you're going to tie him up? Yeah, we can tie him up. Whatever's kind of laying around. Can I okay. look for something to tie him up? Do you, what do you have? Do you have a rope on you? No, well, I've got I've got handcuffs on me. Okay. Well, that if if that yeah, if you have handcuffs, you could use that. Well, yeah, let me handcuff him behind his back. Okay. Okay. Uh, easy enough to do. He's unconscious, so you're able to do that. Sweet. Okay. Uh, anything else? I kind of look at my gun, and I'm like, man, I don't think it's working out so well using this gun. I kind of forgot it, about it, this sword. It, it let, lets you down. It lets um, me down. Yeah. And, Not... and Musette, is Musette going to do anything with her hour? Okay, apparently I'm supposed to do something with my hour, but I don't no, know what I'm, I'm supposed I'm, to do. No, I'm, I'm asking you <laughs> if there's anything you want to do. Uh-uh. I'm going to stare up okay. at the ceiling. Oh, there, well, you're a guy. Okay. At the sky, then. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he's at staring at the sky. All right. Well, the hour goes by. Uh, all of that stuff has been uh, identified and and uh, 
divvied up and, and Chertovir has attuned to his dagger of venom. Uh, it's getting later at night. You do you um, do you want to spend the night here in the, in Darthur City? Um. <clears throat> Yeah, what do you guys think? We should go into one of the buildings and maybe I can put up my little tiny hut so we can sleep? Yes. Yes. Cool. We've had kind of a long day. Yeah, <laughs> right. sounds like a good idea for sure. All right, so I'm going to go down to my spells. And uh, so I guess we got to pick a little place to, to hunker down, right? Should we see the map? Um... Yeah, you can. Like, you can if you want to. Okay, I'm just gonna click Tiny Hut and uh, on my slot, and I've created the Tiny Hut, and we can all kind of like just put our little sleeping rolls on the floor and go to sleep. Okay. And um, is any? Are you gonna do watch, or is everybody just gonna go to sleep? Well, here's the thing. I think my Tiny Hut doesn't let anybody go inside, uh, so. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So everyone uh, that wants to do that can click on the long rest. Long rest. Long rest. Yeah. Long rest. Joe, long rest. Oh, wait. Joe's not there. Sorry. Right. <laughs> he went to the circus. <clears throat> Ralph. Is Ralph there? Yes. Okay. So, um... During the night, you've been kind of sitting in the dark in a cage. Uh, some electric lamps come on, and you see Terrence uh, walking up to you. And he says, Oh, Ralph, you're here. You're back. We've got you. Finally, you've come back to us. I've got some good news for you. You've been promoted. You're uh, no longer a free. Now you're a gladiator. Is there a pay raise? Uh, it's a raise in status. Uh, that doesn't put food in my belly. Well, we, we'll keep you fed. Uh, you said that last time. You don't seem very discriminant. Uh, there's lots of lots of things that you'll eat, from what I remember. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, tonight it's a little bit late for you to be fighting, so I'm going to let you rest. And uh, but tomorrow night it will be your first big match. I'm excited. We'll see who what am you I? Can do. Who? Who? What? Who am I supposed to fight? He says, "Well, we're still considering that. And and uh, if you if you take a look around, you can see now that the lights are on. There are other cages in there with you." Uh, you see this massive reptilian creature. Uh, it's it's uh, like the size of uh, in between a bear and an elephant. Jesus. Yeah, and it's um, uh, and uh, and it kind of looks at you and, and side eyes you a little bit. And then you see uh, a minotaur in another cage ah. near you. Okay. Well. You also see Jonathan in the in a little cage. <coughs> I think you'll have uh, the bird uh, fight someone. Towards the back of the tent. So. All right. And I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise. Well, what if I don't want to fight? Let's say I just kind of stand there. The crowd will your still first be. night at Fight Club. The, the crowd will still be happy to see that as well. So. Wow, I really don't have to do anything. No, you can. If you want to just stand there, you can. It probably won't go well for you. Oh. I think I'm starting to see what you're talking about. Well, you kind of got me between a you know, rock and a hard place, don't you? I suppose. Uh, you know, I, I I asked you to come with me back when you guys were in that that fake hell place. You know, I gave you the chance to come voluntarily, and you didn't do it. What is it that you actually want? 
You just want me to fight for you and entertain, or do you have some kind of plan? Uh, no, I want you to fight for us. I want you to be part of the circus again. Circus. <laughs> hmm. And I have to admit, I was a little bit hurt when you left last time. And especially the way you left. By the way, when you thought you were cutting my throat, that didn't do anything. I mm. made it look like it did. <laughs> well. I put on a big show. That's what I do. That's what you do. That's why I left. Okay, well. <laughs> I'll consider it. We'll right. see what happens. I'm not entirely happy. And I'm a little hungry. Oh, well, um, just a minute. And he he, uh, he walks over to a, a corner where there's a bucket. And he hands you uh, a gravelint, which is like a, a rat. It's like a, a, a rat that's bigger than a rat in, you know, their normal fur. For the, the other, for the unreconciled dominions. Or the, you know, fourth dominion has them. No, no waffles? waffles today uh we when we traveled from uh when we traveled from the fifth dominion we didn't take a lot of vendors with us so do you even know what a waffle is oh yeah we uh we we were i know what a waffle is we we had our our circus there in the in the Fifth Dominion for a long time. No, oh, well, I, I don't know. I've grown more accustomed to waffles. Uh, I, so. I'll see what I can do. But that's today, right, you will. Days. All right. Well, have a good night. And he, yeah. he he walks out and turns off the lamp. And at this point, if you want to go to sleep, you can do a long rest. Yeah. Get your spell slots back. <laughs> I can't talk to Jonathan, can I? You, you can. How far away is Jonathan? Uh, he was just across the room, like 20 feet. Is Jonathan there? Are you asking that out loud? I'm asking Jonathan! Uh, Bird! Yeah. Yes, what? What? What are we doing here? <laughs> Get me out of here. Uh, I, uh, I, if I could, I would have done it. I, I don't know what to do. I'm completely lost. I need to... Do you even... I don't know where exactly we are. Uh, I don't know either. Well, he did you hear he wants me to fight? Yeah. He told me that, too. He wants you to fight. Yep. You're a bird. I know. He he's knows me. He, he's, he's seen what I can do. Okay, well, we have to figure something out, or they're going, or we're dead. He's going to chop us up into little steaks. You buffalo wings. Well, that's uh, an unpleasant thought. You're useless, I Jonathan. I'm going to go to sleep now. Yeah. All right. Good night. Good night. The group in Darthur City, you, you wake up in the morning and uh, you just, did you just leave him t uh, tied up where he was at? The uh, the hand of the unbeheld or did you bring him in with you? Oh, no, we left him outside. Okay. I think we probably should try to see whether or not this whole kidnapping bit had anything to do with him, if, there, if there's any connection um, because that would help us to find him. Should one of us um, cast our, our our zone of truth spell and interrogate them when they wake up, or should we wake them up and then interrogate them, or what should we do? Well, are you are you asking us as a group? Yeah. Well, I would say that the first time we did that, I think he had, I think he was still. Well, he didn't really have a reason to lie, so he was just telling us the truth. So, uh, yeah, I guess we could interrogate him. 
Because we we do need Ralph, so mm -hmm. and we don't we don't really know where he is. <laughs> and yeah, you know, if there's if there's any if there's any connection, you know, at least get a clue. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to separate us or something. So maybe maybe he got kidnapped. Uh, maybe he'll know something. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's let's try to do that. Okay, I think Musette and I both have that spell. Yeah, I've got Zone of Truth, second level. Should we try to wake him up first? Because I'm I'm pretty sure they're still passed out. So who wants to poke him with a stick? He he's actually awake. He's he's looking at you. Okay. So if Creepy. if we want to do Zone of Truth, I can do it and use that's also got that spell, so I mean I can go ahead and cast it. So I've cast it now. Dippity boppity boo. Okay. Okay, and right. so, uh, yeah, it's uh, you, he's got a circle. There's a there's a zone of truth around him. Do you know what happened to Ralph? Our lizard looking friend. No. Did, did you see what happened to Ralph? Yes. So what happened to Ralph? He was there. Parents appeared behind him and disappeared with him. Where is what? Terrence now? I don't know. Do you know how to locate him? No. I don't think he's going to tell us anything. Hmm. That was worth a shot anyway. No. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You see uh, lightning start to kind of crackle between the, the fingertips of his head. And he uh, he launches a radiant blight at, uh, at Zoe. So this sort of light uh, ball of ball lightning sort of starts heading towards you so 19 to hit so that hits yeah so you take eight damage and make a constitution saving throw six okay so you then you take another it, it starts kind of uh, eating at your insides ew and uh, you take another 11 radiant oh. damage. I cast Mage Armor. Okay. I pull up my sword. Me too. Everybody roll for initiative. I'm going to go ahead and cast Aid for Zoe and Matt and Chodervere. Um, it says So those are my three creatures. Um, it says your hit point maximum and current hit points increase by five. <laughs> My guts are on fire. It's kind of warranted at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and okay, that's with um, him with him in handcuffs. <laughs> okay, right. everybody roll for your initiative. Okay, roll for initiative. Okay. Come on. Woohoo! 21. Oh, yeah, 21 oh. too. Yeah, I got 23 points. I got 18. Also, Richard. Richard got 18. Yes. Okay. 112 doesn't have a chance. Okay, uh, Richard and Musette roll against each other. Ooh. Just roll 27 oh. dice. See, see who gets a higher number. Seven. I rolled a 12. Okay, so Richard will be before Musette. Uh, Chertovir is up first. You All said right. you were going to pull your sword on him? That's right. Um, let me go ahead and uh, roll to hit. 17 to hit. That hits. It says six points, I guess. Okay. 1d4 plus four. All right, so Renfrew is next. He is going to uh, attack him with his longsword. And he got a 23, so he hit. Eight damage. All right, uh, Zoe is next. Okay, well, I think turn about a spare play, and since I took something off of them, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my wand of the war mage 
uh, which gives me a plus three bonus to my spell attack rolls. Okay. And the, the spell that I would like to cast is the one that I chose when we uh, leveled up. So I'm going to do Summon Celestial uh, under Avenger. Okay. Wow. Yes. Wow. And you can use it as either Avenger, which is attack, or Defender, obviously, which is defense. I'm doing Avenger. Okay. Uh, so it says range weapon attack, your spell attack modifier to hit range 150 out of 600 feet, one target, 2d6 plus 2 plus the spell's level radiant damage. Uh, Avenger, it says radiant bow, ranged weapon attack. Yeah. I see. So I guess it just makes a ranged weapon attack. Okay. And it's your spell attack modifier, um, which year that went up. It used to be plus eight, but now it's plus eleven because of your wand. Okay. Um, so yeah, you do you do plus eleven, and it's two d six plus two is your damage. Plus eleven to hit. And if you're shooting what? at somebody that's lying on the ground, normally you would have disadvantage, what? but because uh, he's also handcuffed, you it's just normal attack. So 9 plus 11 is 20. Okay, yeah, so yeah, that hits. Okay, so 6 points. And then your damage was 6, okay. Correct. He takes a big old celestial arrow. Is this celestial like a like an angel or something like that? Yeah, What? Yeah, what it... d d describe what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it uh, would, uh, the way it looks would be kind of more tailored towards your, um, your religion. And, you know, how you can kind of decide that stuff. Rabid Anubis. <laughs> All right. There we go. With a bow. Okay. Uh, Pageant Storm uh, rages and runs over and hits him a couple of times. Oh, a couple of times. Okay. She's going to hit him twice with, attack him twice with her flame tongue scimitar. So 27 to hit and 12 to hit. So one of those hits. Yeah, hits. Okay. So six damage and eight damage. Uh, now it's Richard's turn. All right. So I uh, take out the great lucky sword. What is it called? Yeah, the luck blade long sword. Luck blade long sword that I've been sitting on for so long, and I just raise it over my head and slam it down on them. So okay. So uh, boom! Roll to hit with advantage. With advantage, I rolled a 16. That hits. See, yeah, looks like you and rolled 16 twice. It. Yep. Well, okay. I get two attacks. Yeah, but with advantage just means you roll twice and take the higher number. So it looks like you rolled the same mm. thing both times. Lovely. Uh, yeah, so the first one's a hit. And you can roll with advantage for your second attack. Well. Did you roll twice? Well, and the second 29. one was 29. What's the total for the 29? I mean, what was the roll, the base roll for it? Is it 1d10, 1d20 plus 10. I uh, rolled a 19 no. plus 10. Oh, 19 plus 10. Okay. Do you get a, I mean, sometimes fighters get a critical hit on a 19. Do you get that? Uh, your weapon attack score a critical hit on a roll of 19 or 20. Improved critical PHP. Yep. Okay. So you, so, Fire yeah. Look. So yeah, you, one of those attacks is a, it hits, and the other one is a critical hit. Uh, yep. So eleven damage. That's for the one that's not a critical hit. All right. Then the one that's a critical hit. How do I amplify the? Or how do I put that on there? You just roll the damage, and then we double it. Okay. So that's twenty-six damage. Nice. All right. And roll a twenty-sided die. It's weird. Now we're using the chart. Two. Okay. Two. <laughs> uh, it, 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 you, he's disoriented. He has disadvantage on intelligence-based checks, saves, and attacks. Um, he has to make a 15 intelligence save at the end of each turn to stop this effect. 1-1-2 one, one, does? Yeah. He's got a, He's got disadvantage on intelligence saves. I'm pointing him good. Because, you, yeah, you, just, you, you, uh, you hit him hard. So that was your, is that your turn? Are you staying where you're at? Doing any yeah, I'm bonus feeling pretty mighty. Okay. No, I'm feeling pretty mighty after I do that, so. All right. Staying where uh, I'm at. Musette is up next. 
Yeah, um, just, um, cloud of daggers just right on top of him. Okay. Just a little square okay. that he's inhabiting. Because right. Chertevere, because he's 112, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so Chertevere is really, really close. I don't think I can really do anything else safely. Okay. Unless, you know, I accidentally injure Chertevere. So, uh, cloud of daggers on him. Uh, it says I just gotta cast it. Uh, um, Total. Okay, and he'll take that damage when he starts his turn in the in the uh, in the daggers. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He, uh, and he has to get out of it because I just told it up. Yeah. All right. Um, next is uh, Bentley's turn, and he is. Oh, where is uh, Pageant Storm? She needs to be up up there. Let's see. She's next to Churchill. Bentley is going to move up here and attack a couple of times with his swords. He's going to make two attacks with his long sword. Okay, so he's got uh, two hits. 15 and 9 damage. 24. It's uh, starting to get hurt quite a bit. And now it's its turn. Uh, so he stands up you know, get he kind of gets on his knees and then puts one, one leg up and then stands up because he can't use his hands to get up. So uh, it stands up and starts uh, doing gesticulating with the fingers of its head oh. and, uh, and casts Spirit Guardians. And he's casting it at the highest level here. Okay. That does not sound good. Yeah, so everybody in the 15... What radius will be affected by this? Uh, <laughs> oh, just, oh, oh, yeah, just out of it. <laughs> yeah, smart. Oh, he took twelve damage at the start of his turn from the cloud of daggers that are around him. Oh, uh, and he's supposed to take an intelligence saving throw. So with this, uh, yeah, with the spirit dragon, uh, spirit uh, guardians, is that like? Um, we saw this before, right? It was like these flying things. Yeah, I, yeah. I did that yeah, around they, the vehicle. They, they look like worms. His spirit okay. guardians look like uh, look like the righteous. Ah, they're burrowing into me. Yeah, they have like gnashing teeth. <laughs> spirit guardians. Uh, at the start of Chertovir's turn, you uh, make a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. Let's go ahead yeah. and do that. And looks like I hit 14 plus 620. Okay, so you're going to only take half damage from the, uh, the creatures. They do 14 damage, so you take 7. 7 damage. Bam. Yeah. Ouch. Okay. They're burrowing into me. Yeah, but it's your turn. So um, it's my you took turn. that damage at the start of your turn, but now you can do what you want to do. Okay. Um. All right. Here's what I want to do. I want to attack... 112, the hand, with a Numa bullet of third level. Okay. At, you're at point blank range. Are right. you, or are you backing up? I, I shoot him point blank range. Okay. Uh, normally you'd have disadvantage doing that at point blank range because they're like in your face, you know, attacking you and stuff. Oh, okay. But he's also handcuffed. Um, all right, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to roll to hit. Okay. You you don't have disadvantage because he's handcuffed, so it's just a normal attack. And that I got 19 to hit. Yeah, that totally hits. I'm on third oh, yeah. level, so I roll 3d10. Yes. That's 16 plus 3, 19, so that's 19 okay. damage. All right. Don't make me do math. <laughs> Somebody has to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so Renfrew, he's making a wisdom save. That's a fail. Renfrew takes 14. Boy, I tell you what, I'm never going to leave an enemy unconscious ever again. You have to fight the same guy twice. Okay. <laughs> All right, so he hits him both times. Those are some okay. pretty good handcuffs, by the way. Yeah, that was great. Good idea. I'm surprised he hasn't ripped out of them yet. 
don't don't mm -hmm. remind Ryan. He's actually. Or otherwise, not that might strong. give him like a strength saving test, and then he just bah, just brings out that thing. Anyway, he, he, it would take up his whole turn to do that. Um. All right. So that's uh, now is Zoe's turn. And Zoe, uh, make a wisdom saving throw first before you start. Well, that's a lot better. Twenty four. Yeah. So you take half damage. So you take four damage from that, and you know you can move out of the, out of the ring if you want to. Now my celestial is up for an hour because I'm doing the concentration thing, right? Yeah. Does your celestial take damage too? Um, it says he's got 40 hit points plus. Well, I, but I didn't do the spell above fifth, so 40 hit points. Okay. Does it have a wisdom score? So can it take? 14. Know, like okay. So he needs to roll a he needs to roll a um, wisdom save also. Do you need me wisdom. to do that right now? Wisdom is fourteen. That would give him a plus two. I heard the stray dogs of Durther City barking for their missing masters. It's no, diversion. that's just that's just mine with somebody walking past the door. Okay, I rolled a nine plus two is eleven. Okay, so it takes uh, it takes full damage, which is. Uh, 15. Okay, so is he attacking for me, or do I need to do another spell to it as well? Uh, no, it, 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 it can attack for you. Does it attack as a bonus action on your turn? So you still have your full turn. I mean, you okay. spent your turn last time summoning it, so this time he can do whatever it wants. Okay, then I will do... Um, hmm, can't do spiritual with because I don't have the spell slot. Okay, let me do... And if it's shooting arrows at him, there's no reason for it to be, like, right up in his face like that. Okay. Um, all right, let me do Guiding Bolt then. Okay. That's just where I put it. She can oh, move okay. it to where she yeah. would put it. Okay. Well, I'm, like, I'm like right on the outside of his uh, little spell yeah. thing there. Okay, so let me do Guiding Bolt then. Okay. Yeah, roll to hit. Okay. Oh, I definitely didn't hit 15. Yeah, it hits because you guys took his oh, armor cool. off. Okay, so his armor class is 14 now. Yeah, we stripped him. Okay, yeah, so you're, I mean, you're wearing his armor, I think. Guiding bolt damage is 25. Oh, okay. He's hurting badly now. And I took your clothes too. <laughs> Yeah, so that that's pretty good. Uh, is Zoe, is, are you gonna move out of the circle so you don't take damage next time? You have movement still. Yeah, I'm just gonna move me just outside if I can. Okay. And get on there. Ryan, it does say it it takes its turn immediately after hers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, cool. Then then uh, he can shoot an arrow now. Okay, go ahead and roll to hit for that. Okay. And it's plus 11 to hit because it's he uses your spell attack modifier. So roll 20 sided die plus 11. That's an awesome spell, by the way. Plus 11 and uh, plus 11 to hit is really good. Yeah, but I only rolled a one. <laughs> oh, a natural one? Yeah. Oh. Uh. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll say that you're, he's immune to the chart. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, he gets so two attacks. Oh, he gets two attacks. Yeah, okay. half half the spells level rounded down in attacks. Oh. Okay, so did I, do I roll 20 again? Yeah, and add, okay. add 11 to it. Woo-hoo, 17. So okay, 28. Yeah. That totally hits. All right. And then for damage, it's how many? 2d6 plus 2 plus the spells level. Okay, so 2d6. Oh. Plus 7. Yeah. So 8 plus 7, you said? Yeah. 15. Wow. <laughs> Serious business. Okay. My guts are on fire. Of course it is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, in a moment of anger, he probably has uh, doomed himself. He probably should have tried to slip away instead. 
That's Zoe's turn, and Pageant Storm is going is uh, going to first make a Wisdom saving throw. That is a fail. Twelve damage. Both hits. Fourteen damage. It's looking pretty beat up now. Now it's Richard's turn. Do I have to do a Wisdom saving throw? Uh, yes. Your Wisdom save was six, so you take thirteen uh, damage from the little. The little spinning creatures that are flying in a circle around it. All right, so that absorbed the five additional I had from the tent. Yeah, you took that damage. If you want to get closer and hit him with your swords, actually, you should be right up on him if you hit him with your sword before. Right, you're you're a step back too far because you wouldn't be able to reach him right there. You're right. You're right. Do I get to roll with advantage? Oh, look at that. Yeah. Twenty. Twenty-nine. Is that a is that a natural nineteen or a natural twenty? It's a nat- it's a natural nineteen. Okay. Yeah, so that's a critical hit. You don't have to roll a second time if you don't want to. For sure. Yeah. Uh yeah, so go ahead and roll your damage and double it. I rolled so a twelve. Twenty four damage. Okay, and uh roll a twenty sided die. And tell me what you get. This is for the chart. Six. He... Oh, he's knocked back five feet. What's that on the ground? I think that's the blade of daggers. Oh yeah, he was supposed to have taken that damage at the start of his last turn. Has he had two turns? No, he's only had one turn. Okay, yeah, he hasn't had his second turn yet. But I think exiting that, he's supposed to take that damage again. When he exits the space, even though you're forcing him out of it. So, yeah, Musette, can you roll the damage for the the blades? Eight. Okay. Uh, He uh, crumples to the ground. (laughs) Unconscious. Can I run up and stab him through the head? Uh, Yeah, I think, did you get, you had more than one attack, right? Yes, correct. But you would want to step around, probably step around the cloud of daggers. How many feet can I move in my turn? A lot. I mean, more than you need. You only need, because you can just go diagonal around the cloud of daggers and then hit him. So you really only need to go five feet. Yeah. All right. So, since he's just laying there, is it an yeah. action or can I just do it? You, it's a, you. You get an automatic critical hit, and uh, you, you make him. You hit him, and you make him fail two death saves with one hit. Ooh. Okay, and that's the end of Richard's turn. Uh, anybody uh, who? Um, let's see, who was after Richard? Musette is next. Okay. Well, I guess I can. Uh... Drop my uh, cloud of daggers now. Okay. And yeah. uh, where am I? I'm kind of far. I will get closer. Um, yeah, and that doesn't cost you any actions to to. Right. Oh, and by yeah, and the the um that the circle of that yeah those are gone. And then uh, can I just chop off his head? Yeah. Detach. Detach. Bam. Okay. Yeah, because it's an automatic. Uh, I should actually hit. should probably use my long sword then, the thing I just got. There yeah, go. that, that Vorpal long sword on a critical hit decapitates your enemies. And so, so okay. you you slice his head off and it just kind of makes this wet thumping noise and rolls a couple of feet away on a on a gout of black blood. And the blood goes And that's mm-hmm. it. Uh, awesome. The hand of the unbeheld is dead. Uh, Whoa! <laughs> that's my reaction. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, crazy. All right. Uh, so you guys have had your rest. Um, you know that it's going to take a couple of days to to get back home. And uh, and um, Pageant Storm kind of speaks up and says, "You know, I." Um, the way we got to the first dominion we can't do that again without him 
So can we ride with you guys back to your place? Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, we didn't, we still haven't figured out the mystery of where all the Durthers went to. Yes. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I agree. Uh, hmm. pro- I'm assuming it has something to do with, with, with him. And she points at, at 112's body. Yeah. So, I mean, when we search this, I'm talking to you now that the, uh, when we searched the city, we didn't see any bodies, right? People are just missing. You, 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 well, you didn't search the whole city. You looked in one building from what I remember. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you guys, do you, do you want, guys, do you want to search the whole city? Yeah, I guess we should, right? I mean, we're we're trying to figure out. I think, you know, we came over here to find out what had happened to Durther City, and uh, I don't think that, from what I know about Nullianax, I don't think that Nullianax vaporized people, right? You have to see some sort of damage in the city. Okay, everybody that wants to search the city, make an investigation check. All no. right. Might as well. Twenty-three. Wow, that's pretty good. I got four, fourteen plus seven, twenty-one. Okay. I'm not even going to say what I got. Yeah, I got a rock. (laughs) Okay. All right. Well, uh, so what you've discovered or what you've seen is that. it, it looks like just basically looking at the, the patterns of of, uh, of the movement and the way things were broken and stuff, it kind of looks like people may have been fighting each other. Or it's it's hard to say, but you remember that when you fought the wings of Hepexamendios, it, it sprayed this gout of these um, little worms, you know, on you. And as kind right. of dragon breath weapon there's evidence of of those things lying around um and it seems like uh in the aftermath of that uh people turned they were they were turned into into uh probably i mean with since you guys got over some of you got over 20 it seems like from from what you can tell the people were turned into um the righteous from being sprayed by that stuff. Oh. And then and then the survivors were overwhelmed by the righteous and um, and also turned. And most of those righteous seem to have left the city. What a horrible catastrophe happened here. This yeah. is terrible. Yeah, I guess we found out what happened to Durther City. I'm, I'm glad we, uh, I'm glad we stopped that dragon from from destroying uh, any more cities. Um, yeah, so I guess we should get back to our headquarters. You also found some stuff. If I mean, there is a little bit of loot you can take if you want to. Oh, what did we find? You found uh, you found eighty coins. You know, so it equals about well, it equals about eighty dollars of U.S. or, or sixty Great Britain pounds. I forget what that would be Canadian. Um, uh, you found a, a fifth level spell scroll uh, for the mm-hmm. for the spell Contagion. Okay. You found a potion of invulnerability. Uh, a bag of beans. Which is not like a regular bag of beans. It's a magical bag of beans. All right. Magical yeah. beans. And yeah. I didn't have to sell a cow for that. Right. <laughs> and you found a potion of frost giant strength. Okay. Um, I suggest I suggest we give the coins to Bentley because he needs to fix his van. Bentley says, well, it looks like we've got our choice of vehicles now. Um, what about this Volkswagen that you guys drove up in? Can we take that? And uh, and Renfrew says, oh, yeah, it's fine with me as long as we get a ride back to your place. Can I take the magic beans? I want the scroll. I'm, I'm the healer, but, you know, 
Contagion yeah. is pretty cool to have, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, got it. I'm adding that right. wondrous item. I'm adding it to my backpack. Thank okay. you. And, and we'll just assume that, uh, that Zoe took the time to identify these things for you also. So you're a couple hours behind schedule, you know, for, for leaving and getting home. You learn some important information. So, um, so how do we how do we do this? We can take both vehicles back. You can take yeah. So you've got you've got the car that you guys took from the waypoint right from the halfway mm-hmm. point. You well actually that was on the road. You guys just swapped it on the road and you left the right. uh, Benway's car halfway. And there's a between. bike, right? Yeah, there's a motorcycle. I think that's here. I thought oh, yeah, Ralph, Ralph and right. Musette were driving it. Right. Right. So that's here. Uh, that car that you stole and the Volkswagen bus is, are all there. You can wow. Uh, do you have enough people to know how to drive? I would think so. Okay. Let's just go you, back to the headquarters. That is from the Fifth Dominion, and Zoe and uh, Richard are all from the Fifth Dominion. And, and I would say that, that uh, Cheerleader has had enough practice driving, and Bentley has. All right. All right, so uh, who's driving what and who's riding in what cars? BW bus. Okay, are you driving or riding? Driving. Okay. Who's getting on the VW bus? I think that would have like three rows of seats, right? Get on the party bus, choo-choo. Yeah. Buses do not (laughs) choo-choo. Honk, honk. (laughs) Honk, honk. Uh, Dang. (laughs) Wow. <laughs> That's my favorite thing now for forever. <laughs> Do we still have our little um little motorcycle? Yeah, yep, you've got that. Okay. You've got the Volkswagen bus and I think there was a, a a pickup truck that you stole. I'm trying to remember what that I think it was a truck. But the truck yeah. was in pretty bad condition, I think, right? Now it is. Um, because I think it's that, the one same. Was okay. that one was okay, because you, you guys let, abandoned the flatbed truck that got all ripped up. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm still going to take our little our little uh, cart thing. What's it called? Oh, motorcycle. The, the motorcycle? motorcycle. Okay, so yeah. so Musette's driving the motorcycle. There's yeah, a sidecar on there if somebody yes. wants to ride on the sidecar. I don't want anybody. You guys stay okay. away from me. <laughs> okay. Musette's not having it. Uh, all right, and who's driving the pickup truck? And who's riding on the, the party bus, Choo Choo? <laughs> party bus, Choo Choo. Choo Choo. I'll drive the truck. Okay. Oh, sorry. Do you want to drive it? I, I, I don't care. I... Okay. Renfrew is going to ride in the truck, and, uh, and Pageant Storm is going to ride in the bus. Who else is riding in the bus and who's riding in the truck? I'll ride in the truck. Okay. I guess I'll go on the bus. Choo choo. All right. And who, <laughs> who, who was riding? Who's driving the truck again? Oh, I thought Zoe was driving the truck. Oh, okay. I'll drive. Sure. Okay. I'll drive the truck. All right. There we go. Okay. So uh, you guys get in your in the cars and you're uh, starting to head out. Um, pageant sword, pageant storm sort of speaks up. This is in the in the bus. Uh, she says, "You guys were mentioning something about Ralph being in a circus." Yeah. Um. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So I guess we can. Was Terrence part of the circus? You don't know that. Um, okay, yeah, I'm asking everybody if if we know that Terrence was, you know, has a circus. Yeah, this is why I was bugging you guys about who's riding in what car. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay, that yeah, makes I'm sense. I'm not there. Musette's yeah. right. not here, man. Uh, so I'm with Matt, right? No. Who's in my VW bug? Am I alone? Uh, Pageant Storm is in there with you. And Bentley. Okay. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah. So, 
I think uh, it, it might be safe to assume that he got kidnapped to go back to the circus with Terrence. So, Badge and Storm, do you know where Terrence usually hangs out? Well, here's the thing. There was a circus uh, that he, we were supposed to investigate uh, in, in uh, Venef. And he said, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. And he disappeared for days at a time. He told us there was nothing going on there and that it was fine. Okay, um, that totally sounds like we, we need to go see Van F. I guess so. Um, yeah. And she she uh, unwraps, a, uh, she pull, digs through her pockets for a little bit and unfolds a, um, a flyer. She says, th th this is it. And... Uh, it says, uh, Terrence's Amazing Infernal Parade. Uh, with Dr. Fetter's Family of Freaks. This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination shop is dedicated to benefiting the arts and medicine program at Texas Children's Cancer Center. Over 50% of the proceeds go to the Texas Children's Cancer Center, where artist Don Bertram volunteers monthly. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and celebrates and continues to be inspired by his art. He uses that inspiration to help kids through the Texas Children's Cancer Center, and we couldn't be more thrilled to continue to work with him. There's a news feature video that shows Don working with the kids at Texas Children's Cancer Center and his artwork. Click the side banner at www.clivebarkercast.com to find links to the video and his Etsy shop where you can buy his prints, books, and support this wonderful program. Here are the newest original paintings by Don Bertram available in the shop. You can't have snail bait because that one's mine. Humanoid character artwork for Musette, Chertovir, Zoe, and Ralph by Aja Yordanova. She also created the Unbeheld in the opening title sequence. Jonathan Livingston Seagull artwork by Shayla Sackinger of Bird Ninja Art. Map of the Reconciled Dominions and Isorderex by Marco Staines at Mark Stain Art. Jericho Squad intro composition, Cradle of Jersemet, provided by friend of the show, Ben Warren. Additional in-game music by Tabletop Audio. Bentley Widget here, smashing through the fourth wall like the freaking Kool-Aid man to tell you about our friends at Little Spark Films. Imagine you're sitting around the table eating waffles with your friends and they're all talking about this crazy new film they saw on Amazon Prime or Tubi or Plex. So you're like, yeah, it was totally scary. But you haven't seen it. And they can see right through you because you're maybe made out of glass like the Kool-Aid man. Don't be that guy. Go see The Torturer right now. Pause this thing. Watch it and come back. Support Joe and Catalina. Oops, I mean Ralph and Musette. Also, while you're supporting them, you might want to see their Hellbound Laments, short films featuring boxes from the Pyramid Gallery and configuration boxes. You should also check out Catalina's Barker and Briefs, where she reads Clive Barker books. Don't have time to read? Are you a filmmaker with aspirations of making the next big summer blockbuster, but are too bogged down with your own self-imposed workload of movie making and don't know what to do? Well, the solution is here. Make your own damn movie, the audiobook. Written by legendary filmmaker and creator of The Toxic Avenger. That's me, Lloyd Kaufman. With special guest Adam Jakey in Trent Hager. Read by me, Catalina Querida. Get the inside scoop on the trauma process, raising money, 500 useless screenwriting books boiled down to one short chapter. Meeting your future victims, covering your ass, location shooting, stunts, and effects, and fixing all your problems in post-production. Listen as Tromorific filmmakers read out loud to you all 329 pages of Lloyd's personal knowledge and experience. Start streaming your chapters today on Troma Now!
Before the fall of Earth, we humanity had only one thing. The power. The power fueled us all to feed, to fuck, to entertain. day to watch some movies. I lost my friend to this what the killer fuck? that used the power somehow to come into our world. I was scared, so I ran. One after one, he took the lives of every human I didn't hate. In my quest for vengeance, I met Rue. I had never met a being like that. Rue hated me. It told me the only way to defeat the Kronos was with his weapon, the Blade of Kronos. In acquiring the weapon, it took something from me. I eventually found the monster, and I didn't care what happened to me. I longed for Hey, handsome. Baby Jesus don't fuck for no cornbread. Goddamn cranberry sauce! I stopped caring after he kicked my ass. Eureka! Have you ever wanted to visit Fairbanks, Alaska? Catch the Northern Lights, visit Denali National Park, Chena Hot Springs, or any of Alaska's other scenic destinations? Come stay in our Eureka Airbnb. Use the code BarkerCast and we'll take 10% off your stay. Make sure there are cool Clive Barker decorations, books, and movies. Maybe you can even join us as we record an episode. Another great way to support the Barker cast is go to our Tee Public store and get one of our t-shirts. We've got Jose's Baphomet design, Jericho Squad, uh, Cenobium designs by Nina and Ed Martinez, Marcus's Pinhead design, and our old legacy shirts. Just go to www.teepublic.com slash stores slash BarkerCast. Oh, I see what you did there. That's, that's good. Uh, yeah, so I think this would be, what do you think, Bentley? I think this would be a good place to start searching for Ralph, right? Yeah, uh, I. that's the only lead we've got, right? Agreed, yeah, yeah. So I think, um, where is Van F? I'm kind of dodgy on the geography here. Do we have a map? Uh, yes, yeah, we do. I think Bentley, since he's got that helm of telepathy, should probably give us a, a memo in our brains telling us where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. if he's got it, use it. Yeah. No, no. I, yeah. yeah. It's better than a CB. Choo -choo. He, 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 yeah. <laughs> Convoy. <laughs> Big okay. Phantom and Joe 309. All right, so here we are. So oh, we're right. way up there. There's Durther City kind of near the border of the, uh, like it's a, a couple it. hours drive from the border On the left. of the First Dominion, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and we're headed back okay. towards these order X. All right, so. Van F is a, like a suburb of Patashqua, which is way down in the Fourth Dominion. More where, oh, wow. where uh, Squad uh, 78 is based. That's a long way to go. I think we should stop at his order X first and, uh, get our bearings and then see if we can use the teleporter to maybe go to Petashoka and, and start from there. What do you guys think? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea, but I'm not driving with you. My bad. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Is Bentley using the Elm of Telepathy? It doesn't work like that. I mean, okay. you, it's, it, you can, you can try to read the thoughts of someone that you can see. Oh, wait a minute. I got my, I got my, uh, uh, phone i got my yeah. uh yeah you jericho can do that. 77 phone 
That's better than down. the Helm of Telepathy. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to pop up my little StarTac uh, Motorola that I have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and there's a little picture of us taken at the base. And I'm going to be like, okay, hey, everybody, uh, I think we've got a lead. Looks like Terrence might have might have had a circus somewhere in Venef in the Fourth Dominion. And I think that might be a good place to start looking for Ralph. Okay. So what do you guys think if we go to his Ordorex and, uh, and then try to make our way to the Fourth Dominion? Make a dexterity uh, saving throw. Dexterity. Oh, yeah, because yeah. I'm driving. Shoot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> don't, don't drive and talk on the phone, kids. 13. <laughs> Uh, okay. 10 plus 10. Yeah, you you swerve a little bit. You almost your wheels almost go off the road for a second, but you just just on one side. You but you manage to recover. Two wheels. Okay, <laughs> we're back. All right. Okay. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I was just uh, I kind of swerved a little bit. So yeah, what do you guys think? We should uh, probably go to his Ordorex and then go take the transport to maybe oh. the Fourth Dominion. Let's do it. Let's do it. That's the spirit. All right. Chert of okay. out. <laughs> choo choo. <laughs> oh, God. I don't care. I'm having fun. All, All right. right. Um, so you, uh, you, you, um, as you, as you're driving, um, and Renfrew is in the truck, uh, and, and Renfrew says, so, uh, when you saw Terrence, you saw a tiger? Is that right? To to uh, Richard. Yeah, yeah, he kind of like a upright walking tiger person. I have these glasses that allow me to see with true sight, so I don't know what everybody else saw until I pulled my glasses down. I just saw a person. But yeah, he seems uh, to be something more than just a human. So he's from the fifth dominion. Um, like me, I'm a, I'm a night breed, but I don't. That doesn't sound like any night breed that I'm familiar with. Uh, do Do you know? Um, any of you know what that might be? Um, so I'm not hearing this, right? No. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this would be Zoe and and Richard. And, um, Zoe, you could make a religion check. I got 11. Okay. Yeah, you have no idea what that could be. And, and Richard, if you have a, um, if you have a proficiency in religion, you could see if you can think of what that would be. I am not proficient in religion. Okay. So you guys have no idea what that might be. So Let's, have you never seen him look like that before? No, no, he always just looked like how he looks. Just looked like a human with weird eyes. I had no idea. How long have you guys uh, been running with that guy for? Oh, oh, uh, a week. So he's pretty fresh. He transferred over. He showed us papers. Uh, said that he was uh, he was assigned to our squad. Um, uh, his special assignment was to to look into Squad Seventy Seven. What? I asked Zoe to pull up next to the VW bus and roll her window down. Hey, roll your window <laughs> down. <laughs> hey, holler at those guys and tell them what he just said. Which part? <laughs> The part about um, him having been assigned to investigate our squad and had official papers from Jericho. Yeah, who 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 did the paperwork? I mean, I wonder. I'm getting suspicious. Yeah. Suspicious thoughts. That 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 suggests to me that uh, you know somebody higher up is uh, in on this. Um, are you? Who you guys are yelling into the bus? This stuff. Yeah, we're we're yelling it. Okay. Hey, uh, I never heard about that stuff. I don't know. <laughs> How wide is this road? <laughs> Not very wide. Okay. 
wide enough, I hope. In in most places. Pull over. Okay, I'm pulling over. I'm pulling over. Okay, so here's the deal. Apparently, Terrence showed up with some paperwork that said that uh, he was being reassigned to their group and that he was supposed to look into Team 77. And that's kind of, well, that's questionable because he's now kidnapped one of us, apparently. And, uh, yeah, who, who filled these papers out? That doesn't make any sense. Unless just, somebody above us is in on something that they should not be in on. This all of 78 seemed to have been infiltrated more than just one way. So, I mean, we had that 112, we had uh, Cassius, we had all kinds of nastiness going on with that squad, but... Yeah, it's not it my just... favorite squad to be in anymore. I can tell you that. It, there's not much left of us. Only well, I'm not trying to... Left. I'm not trying to point fingers at you. I'm just saying it's just, it's just weird that there's all these people that are able to infiltrate our squad with our, our, our not just our squad our organization are they getting falsified documents or is somebody providing them with these documents are we supposed to go to the fourth are they leading us to the fourth well uh the uh, 112 was the one who accepted them i never saw the paperwork paperwork up close i just he showed it you know and 112 looked at it and, and uh, accepted. Yeah, I think those probably weren't real papers. I mean, because um, they, they were all in on the conspiracy, right? I mean, Cassius, 112, and looks like Terrence as well. I mean, I don't, I don't think that they had real papers. I think it was all a pretext just to try to infiltrate us and investigate what we were doing, just to obstruct us and entrap us in Durther City. At least that's that's the way I'm seeing this. Um, so I guess when we find Terrence, we might find more answers. All right, so let's hurry up and get down to where we need to go. Sure. I'm going to get back into my VW bug. Choo-choo. It's a Volkswagen bus, not yeah, a bug. Volkswagen. Yeah, no, not a bug. Sorry, misspoke. Touche. Touche. Choo-choo. All right. It's just a lot to swallow. And I'm just following them. I don't give right. a crap. Oh, we'll Got figure it. it out whenever we stop. Okay, so uh, we're I like how many hours away from Zordorex? Uh, it's it's like eight hours just to get to the halfway point. Or, you no, know, it was like 12? Yeah, yeah, I think it was 12. 12 oh hours God. to the halfway point. Okay, I guess we drive, we drive all the way to Zordorex. Do you have enough gas to do that? Uh, I'm gonna. I, I look at my dashboard. What do I see? So on this bus, uh, the bus head is at like a, about a half a tank. But you've only okay. been driving for, you know, twenty minutes or so. Okay. Okay, um, I'm not sure how much fuel we got left. Uh, did we pack fuel? So, okay, D D D. This is this is uh, Trudovir again. Hey guys, did we are pack any fuel? Are you driving again, or are you, what's going? Yeah, did you guys already dry, start driving, or are you still on the pulled over? I think we're back to driving. Okay. Right. Make another dexterity saving throw then. <laughs> dexterity saving throw. Ah, uh, one plus three, four. You got a natural one. Yes. Okay. Uh, you you rolled the the Volkswagen <laughs> bus. Trying to talk you on the phone. Me, Smalls. Oh. Oh. Okay. Choo choo, buddy. Yeah. Choo choo. <laughs> All right. All right. That was a train right. wreck. Uh, okay. All right. Everybody All right. inside of the bus has to make a dexterity saving throw. Richard was right to not want to ride with Joe DeVere. <laughs> Is there a way for me to flip my image upside down? <laughs> yes. Pageant Storm just takes half damage. At least it was a spectacular crash, I guess. Did we flip over? So Pageant Storm takes five damage. 
Uh, everybody who make everybody make a dexterity check saving throw that's inside. Okay, that's me. Dex, uh, dex, dexterity. Yeah, you're just basically trying not to get hurt while you're flipping over. Six plus three, nine. Okay, you take uh, uh, nine damage. And I feel, I feel strangely aroused by being in a car crash. All right. I come out of it. Please tell me that Bentley's going to use some of that 80 bucks to get you a headset. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, you guys see the Volkswagen just, um, its wheel kind of goes over the edge of the road. And uh, when he tries to correct it and turns back, the whole Volkswagen bus rolls over and and, uh, flips over on, uh, it's upside down for a second, then it flips over on its side and slides down into the ditch. I get out of it. I kind of shake myself up and say, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> and, Can uh, I do a mass healing word since so many of us are uh, bumped and bruised between me in the in the fight and y'all yeah, in the car crash? Yeah, definitely. So, um, Muzan, are you pulling over also? Yeah, I'll pull over. They better. I mean, they just saw me flip the freaking bus. Oh, sucks to be him. Let's keep going. <laughs> I, just I mean, I could. Off. Yeah. So how, okay. how much healing do you do? If I wanted to crash a bus, I'd be playing desert bus. All right, 12. Okay, so everybody gets 12 back. 12, okay. Awesome. Remember, hands-free driving, folks. I'm glad you didn't ask me if I had my seatbelt on. <laughs> Did you? Tudor just goes crazy. No, Doug, let's, <laughs> let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah, the, the, you, you guys need to uh, kind of pile into the truck at this point. And you do okay. remember that your your messed up truck is still uh, is still pretty is still far behind. Uh, you, your extra fuel that you had for that truck is in the in this new truck, right? So you had an old like flatbed panel truck sort of a thing, right? With a just like a wooden bed. Uh, that one was the one that got ripped up, and that was left behind. But you took all the spare gas out of it when you took this new truck. So now you got the truck and the motorcycle. People can either sit in the back of the truck uh, or sit in the sidecar with Musette. I go in the truck. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> nice Volkswagen, bud. Yeah. It was. Wow. Mm. Yeah, lots of unexpected things happen. That was hilarious. Yeah. Um, okay, so you, yeah, you can, if you guys want, you can also stop at the at the flatbed truck and and take it back again. But it's pretty messed up. Can we siphon the fuel out of the VW? Oh yeah, good idea. I mean, we got enough fuel now, right? Yeah, and. That's a good uh, idea. Yeah, and you there's enough to to fill up the this uh, your truck, so it's at full now. Uh, right, let's, let's keep you, going. Yeah, make a Constitution saving throw. Whoever's siphoning the fuel. Well, wait, did you have a? Do you have? What do you? What would it take? You need like a little hose. Ah, just poke a hole in the bottom of it and drain it into the can. Oh, okay, like like Mad Max. Yeah, I just like I do it here. Okay. Constitution saving throw. No, you don't have to do that. You're not. That's that was just to keep see if you accidentally swallowed the gas. Oh, yeah, but you you got <laughs> a really good roll. I didn't swallow any gas yeah. or diesel okay. or whatever it is. With my All luck, right. you probably spit take it into my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got gas <laughs> right in my eyes. Be like, ah, I take another eleven damage, and then then you catch on fire. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Uh, all right. So you've got your you've got the gas filled up as much as you could. You uh, put it into the gas into a pan and kind of tried to dump it into the gas tank, and you were pretty successful. So you're back on the road, pig piled into the back of this pickup truck, and one person who's going to ride on the sidecar, or is somebody going to ride on the sidecar? 
I don't care. Nope. Okay. Okay, I'm Renfrew. By myself, Ren then. Screw you guys. Ren I don't, I don't Renfrew, ride, bitch. <laughs> Renfrew is going to ride in the sidecar. Okay. All right. So you guys uh, head back, or heading back towards the... Um, so the, 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 wind, the the midway point. Okay. Yeah. Hey, look, there's our old truck. <laughs> yeah. Right? Bye. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so a bunch of hours go by um, uneventfully. You guys eat your packed lunches on the way down. Um, and you arrive. At, it's, uh, it's the sun starting to go down, and you've arrived at the midway point cabin. Um, at this point, uh, you can um, you can camp here, take a long rest, or you can try to push through into the morning and just keep driving. Um, yeah. What do you think, guys? We could probably um, take a rest and take a short rest and then keep going to get there before you know it's too late. Wait, a short rest? Yeah. Like oh. I mean, it's night, right? Yeah. It's getting dark. Okay. A short rest is like an hour. Oh, okay. So yeah, let's let's stop here for the night and continue in the morning. Okay. So are you going to uh, use your tiny hut, or are you going to just have people just camp out in the cabin? I'm starting to. I'm st I'm starting to be conditioned by you to question every time I stop somewhere that something's going to jump out at me. But. Uh, oh. <laughs> Uh, the cabin yeah. as it is. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Apparently, I don't learn from my mistakes. Uh, I mean, you guys are free to say, do you guys want to continue or do you guys want to stop here? Are you tired? Is your back hurting? Do you need to do a constitution check to see if we need to rest? If we've driven for six hours, we should take a rest. You've okay. yeah. driven for 12 hours. Okay. I, I, I thought, so yeah, but we're at the midway point, aren't we, though? Yeah. So, yeah. so six hours yeah, we've been yeah, driving it, after so a fight. Like, right. No, it's it's 12 hours. It's It it it, it was 12 hours of driving, and it's, it's oh. a two-day journey. To between oh, them. well, then we definitely need to take a break. Okay. Yeah. Let's, I'll, I'll do the tiny hut again, and uh, and I'll be okay. like, hey, mi casa su casa. All right. Uh, so everybody can take a long rest again. And Ralph, it's um, evening Ralph. time, and uh, and Terrence comes back in and he says, "Hey, guess what, Ralph? You're on. You ready?" No, 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 okay. no, no. I'm not feeling this today. <laughs> he says, Come "Well, back to you'll, me tomorrow. You'll snap out of it." And he grabs a handle on a your so your cage is on wheels, and he grabs a handle like a, a Red Rider wagon kind of a thing starts pulling your cage and Ralph just flops down in the corner of the cage and sits there with crisscross applesauce okay and somebody <laughs> else uh, somebody else grabs the Minotaur's cage and starts wheeling that one out oh Jesus all right and uh, so at this point um, you're you guys are kind of wheeled out into this massive like circus tent arena uh, and uh, one on each side your cages are open your equipment and stuff is laying on the ground in front of your cage. And um, there's a pretty massive crowd uh, watching you watching you from the stands. Uh, and he's uh, and, and Terrence has kind of moved up into this upper box area uh, up above the crowd and you kind of hear him announcing announcing to the crowd. Uh, he says, Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen. For, tonight's for tonight's main, main event, event, we have, we have the, lizard the Lizard Man, man versus, versus the Minotaur. The Minotaur. Who, Who will win? win? Place, Place your bets. Your bets. <laughs> and uh, the Minotaur steps down out of his uh, cage and grabs an axe. A uh, big massive axe that's laying out on the ground in front of him. And starts heading towards you. And is he charging me, or is he just walking towards me? Uh, right now, all he's done is picked up the axe. Oh, I guess this is where my 
Ralph needs to stand up and do something. What do I have lying in front of me? Uh, oh, your your cloak of displacement, your weapons, all of them except for the one that kind of built into your arm. That one is still there. Yeah. Hey, buddy, Minotaur. What are we gonna uh, do? Roll your initiative. Eight. All right, Ralph, you get to go first. He rolled a four. Oh, okay. So uh, he doesn't want to do this just as much as I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's cause some fear in this guy. What's the what's this spell save DC? Uh, the attack save throw? Yep. Uh, 15. 15. So he has to beat a 15 on his wisdom saving throw? Yes. Okay. Uh, he got a 19 plus 3 is uh, 22. Okay, well, crap. So I used that guy up. You, you used an action. You have bonus actions left, and you have movement. Bonus action. A little bit more. Okay, so now I can't go anymore. Yeah, he's gonna he's going to charge you and do a gore attack. So he goes. <laughs> he puts his head down and and uh, charges at you. You uh, mess with a bull, you get the horns. Some hellish rebuke. You haven't been hit yet. Okay, I haven't been so... hit yet. Yeah, but he did uh, uh, 25 to hit. That's 10. You take uh, 26 damage from him charging you. Jesus. Okay, now, you, now you're now you going to do a reaction hellish rebuke. Okay, I'm at 54. Okay. And then reaction. Yeah, hellish rebuke. Okay. Uh, the attack save throw is dexterity 15. Okay. Dexterity 15. I'll roll it on here. Seven. So he takes the he takes the full damage. He failed. Okay. So that is uh, it takes two d ten fire damage on a failed save. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead and roll the the fire damage. And so thirty four. Thirty four. Wow. It wasn't even your turn, and you did more damage than he did. Okay. Sweet. Yikes. Okay. Yeah, so he catches on fire. The this the crowd starts screaming. So everybody, uh, everybody that's not Ralph, roll a six-sided die. <laughs> now you're being the crowd and you're cheering for Ralph. Oh, okay, yeah. sure. I got Quattro. a four. I got okay. a three. I got a four. All right, and then four, four, uh, four, three. Okay, what's the total of all that? 15. 15. Okay. And the crowd cheering for the Minotaur got a 16. So the Minotaur gets uh, gets one um, inspiration. He gets a, a, an extra d4 onto his attack roll for next time. Damn it. Is it my okay. turn? Should have uh, cheered harder. It, it is, yeah. Now it's your turn. <clears throat> All right, as my action... I would like to use uh, Darren's tentacle whip. Okay. So, you know, this whip flops out my arm. Yeah. And he's got a... The damage is 1d4 plus 4, and then 1d6 psychic. Okay. Uh, roll to hit with your tentacle whip. Well, I rolled a 20, and then I add what... And then, yeah, and then what do I add to it? Well, a natural 20 is a critical hit, so the adding part doesn't matter as much anymore. You got a critical hit. Oh, okay. You, yeah, wow, you see, you got a 20 on the 20 side of die. Yeah. The long okay, whip so, like. What? So oh. roll all your damage and double it. 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so 10 damage. You double all of that, so it's 20. Okay. And he's and, stunned. And he's stunned. That weapon stuns on a critical hit. Wow. And you gain a <laughs> plus two bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this magic whip, but attack rolls made against 
Aberrations with this whip have disadvantage. Creature hit by this weapon takes an extra 1d6 psychic damage when you roll a 20 on a d20 for an attack roll with this weapon. The target is stunned until the end of its next turn. As a bonus action, you can sheathe the whip by causing it to retract into your arm or draw the whip out of your arm again. So the the uh, so now it's also taking additional 1d6 damage because it's a critical hit? Is that what that's I'm what, hearing? That's what it looks like. Okay, yeah, roll another d6. Two. Okay. Wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, he's hurting badly. And roll a 20-sided die because you did a critical hit, so we're going to use the chart to see what happens to him. Four. Okay, he's hobbled. His speed is reduced by 10 feet. Okay. Um, so, yeah, he's got a lot of a lot of bad stuff going on to him. He's stunned and he's hobbled. And as a bonus action, I can do uh, two weapon fighting. Oh, to, yeah, to hit him with. If you've got another weapon in your other hand, you can you can attack him with it. Well, I don't, but I have hungry jaws. So once per short rest as a bonus action, you can make a bite attack. If it hits, you gain two temporary hit points. As a bonus action? You yes, can do sir. That? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and do that. Okay, Roll a hit uh, for, for your bite attack. Roll to hit. So 9, so, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 would hit, yeah, so that hits. Okay, okay so roll the, the bite damage from the Hungry Jaws. 7. Plus, okay. And then, wow. And then I gain two temporary hit points. Yeah. Wow. He's hurting badly, and uh, now it's... I'm, I'm guessing you're. that's it for your turn, right? I ripped out his jugular. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, okay. My 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 uh, tentacle arm is still hanging hanging loose. For his turn, he's stunned. And right, Robin, he's just supposed to make a, a saving throw to get out of being stunned. It just says he's stunned until the start of your next turn. So he's stunned for this round. Oh, he's got no he's got no save or anything. He just. Okay, no. he's just kind of sitting there and shaking, and and uh, he can't do anything. The crowd, uh, the crowd is cheering again. So everybody, roll another six-sided die for this new round. Great. I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take away a die because he's doing really badly. So they only get three dice to to roll with now. Five. Six. Okay. So what's the total of all that? 14. Okay. So they got a 10. Uh, so Ralph, you get uh, you get a you get to add a four-sided die or wait, three four-sided dice to whatever you roll. Then for the to the next thing that you roll. Cuz the crowd is cheering for you now. Oh, okay. So I um, guess I'm going to uh, is it my turn? Yeah, is it it's Ralph's your turn. turn? Oh. Yep. Yeah, because he, you know, after your last turn, he was stunned and he really couldn't do anything. Okay, so one uh, d ten plus three. Uh, with, a, I guess, what's it say? Hit DC plus seven. I'm gonna use my Eldritch Blast. Okay. Uh, it, it's with disadvantage if you're like at point blank range. Oh, it is. Yeah. Well, yeah. Then I'm going to just take a step back. Okay. Because he's stunned and I'm. Well, he's not stunned anymore, so he oh, can, if you take a step back, he can do an attack of opportunity. Oh, okay. He, he, he lashes out with his axe. Ah, bastard. Got, Eldritch uh, Blast. He, he hits you. Bastard. How much? 16 damage. Ah. Don't forget the Cloak of Displacement. Oh. Okay, he rolls with disadvantage, right? 16. Does a 16 hit, Ralph? 16? Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah, so he hits me. Okay, he hit me. 16 damage. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm down to 38. Okay. All right, but you you were able to back up so you can fire your Eldritch Blast. Now I hit you with my Eldritch Blast. Okay, roll the hit. 17? Uh, um, that, I rolled a 17. Yeah. In 17 just by itself would hit, but yeah, I think you've got, was it plus 8 or something like that on top plus of Plus 7. 
Oh, seven, yeah, totally hit. What's your Eldritch Blade? You've got two beams, I'm sure, assuming they're both hitting him. Yeah, two beams hitting him. <clears throat> uh, target takes 1d10 force damage. Uh, the spell creates more than one beam when you reach higher levels. Two beams at fifth level, three beams at 11. Okay. So, yeah, he's got, I got, I'm hitting him with two beams, I guess, each yeah. one at 1d10, yeah. right? Well, each one you have to roll to hit with. So, you, oh. you hit with the first one, you got to roll to hit with the second one. What's this 1d10 plus three damage? That's the damage. Oh. So, each okay, beam, so. each Eldritch Blast has its own attack roll. Like, one can hit and the other one can miss. Okay, so or the first the one, I rolled a 10 plus, so 13. 13 damage. Actually, the first one takes him out. Oh. He uh, he crumples over onto the ground. <laughs> and okay. uh, Terrence, Terrence shouts out, hey, our, new our new champion, champion the, the lizard, lizard man. man. Well, I go ahead and hit the Minotaur with my other beam so I can cook him a little bit and have dinner. <laughs> oh, God. I, okay. So that's a four. Yeah. He's, me oh. he's, he's, medium, he's cooked medium for me. Okay. Uh, and uh, he says, let's hear let's it hear for Reptilithor. Reptilithor. <laughs> 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 Fuck that guy. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, the, that match is over. Um, you're herded back into your cage and, and pushed back. Uh, he says, stay tuned, stay tuned tomorrow, tomorrow night. night. We've got, got a, a very, very special, special opponent, opponent for Reptilithor. For Reptilithor. Uh. <laughs> you don't you want, don't to, want miss to miss it. it. <laughs> and the crowd is going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so that was that was Ralph's night. Now okay. And bask in my Minotaur carcass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you. Uh, you guys all wake up. There were no incidents. Not nothing that you can. It looks like nothing attacked the cabin or, or your uh, your dome. Everything went pretty well without a hitch uh, in the night, and you're able to, to uh, get back in your truck and motorcycle and drive off again, after breakfast. Right. The the dragon carcass on the ground is looking a little more rank than it was the other day. Yeah. Okay, so we're still making our way to Zordorex. Do we make it there? Uh, yeah, yeah. After about another twelve hours, and if you, if without any uh, talking on the phone while driving, you're able to make it uh, just fine. You make it back. Um, Bentley says, "Sorry, are you heading uh, heading back to uh, Bentley's shop, or you, do you want to stop anywhere on the way?" I think we're going straight to the headquarters, right, guys? Okay, because I think you it, your library would be on the way, if I remember right. Let me pull up the map. Okay, but um, I just drove 12 hours. I mean, I'm not going to go to the library. I don't have anything to research there, right? Are you asking me? No, I mean, I, I'm saying, I guess. Yeah. I, oh, whoa, look at that. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Whoa. That's that sweet. is nice. Holy moly, that is great. 77 so where wonders you come of the in from the west is pretty close to the Eurydamek Kesperit. So if you, in, in you know, in the the uh, seven, the up at the uh, the very top, you see seven, uh, 77 wonders of the Imagica. That's where, that's where Bentley's shop is. So you've got oh, another okay. like couple hours drive to get there. Uh, but you can, you can come in near the Eurydamek Kesperit if you want to. Do I, I got some scrolls, I guess. I got some magic beans. Uh, I guess I could try finding out what the magic beans do, or do I already know what they do? Yeah, you, they were identified. So you know. Okay, they were identified. All right, then I guess, um, what do you think, guys? We don't need to look anything else up, I guess. We can oh. just go straight to the 77 Wonders of the Magica. Yeah, I don't need okay. to stop. All right, then. No stopping. Uh, so you, uh, after another couple of hours, you make your way around the outskirts of Vizordorex to the 77 Wonders of the Imagica. And, um, and, uh, Bustle and Pancake are there to let you in, because they're Musette's favorite people. 
Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> yep, everything is as you left it. Um, you, yeah, uh, and, uh, and Bentley says, Hey, do you want me to set you up so that you can go to the Fourth Dominion? Yes. I yeah, imagine what? these these guys want to get home, right? Right. Yep. So I turn to um, I turn to uh, Pageant Storm and uh, Renfrew, and yeah, you guys wanna you guys wanna go to the fourth? Is that where you came from? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Fourth Dominion by Patashqua. All right. Let's go to Patashqua. Okay, so he sets it up. Uh, ben Do you know where that I'm... circus is? Sorry. Uh, it's probably it, Venep. Uh, yeah, it's, that's, it's, that was in a pamphlet that uh, uh, Pageant Storm had. Yeah, it's it's Venep, and because it's a big old circus, it's right on the outskirts of Venep. Okay, so we don't we don't need Pageant Storm and Renfrew. They're free to go if they want to leave. Right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Would you guys like to join Squad 77? Well, we're going to check in with uh, with Jericho and see uh, if we can. But it certainly makes sense to me. That's fair. I think, I think that we do desperately need a squad that's here guarding the, the opening to the Fifth Dominion. But I don't know. I, I will ask. Uh, in fact... When we get there, I I I, I plan to uh, to go across the border and speak with them. And this is this is Pageant Storm talking. Uh, Renfrew can stay behind and help you if he wants. Okay. Says, yeah, sure. I can I can do that. Uh, so you, yeah, you guys will have anything you want to do, anything you want to say or get or do before you head over to the Fourth Dominion. Um, I mean, we drove 12 hours, 14 hours, and I think yeah. we're a little tired. Yeah. Uh, should we take, like, a short rest? A short rest doesn't do anything for you. Okay. I mean, as far as, like... Yeah, I'm stoked. Let's do it. Let's go to Pashoka. Let's fight. Let's crack this egg. All right. I'm in it. I'm in it. The, where's the portal? Okay. Where's the glowing portal? I'm going to jump yeah, right you, in no, it. No, I'm saying if you wanted to take a rest, it would be going to bed. It's like going to sleep. Short rest right. is only an hour. And that's for like getting hit points back if you got hurt. Right. And, and just some. You know. All right. All right. Uh, Spectacles, you, testicles, yeah. wallet, keys. I got everything. I think I left my handcuffs back there on that dead body. Oh yeah, right. Dang Bentley, it. Do, do you have any <laughs> uh, handcuffs in the store, or anything that will bind people? Um, yeah, you got some zip ties or anything. Make make an investigation check. Who me? You you can look around. Yeah, I don't know. An investigation check. Yeah. Okay. I've got 18, 11 Ooh. plus 7. Okay, yeah, uh, you were able to find some handcuffs. Well, they're actually zip ties, but it's close. Yeah, can you work with this, Matt? Absolutely. Thank there you. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Not Matt. Immersion. Uh, yeah. Richard. Who's Matt? Yeah. Richard. Sorry, Richard. Richard. <laughs> Dick. All right. Okay. So yeah. That being said, now you're you're. Uh, it's it's uh, getting kind of late. It's about. Um, I'd, well, if you left pretty early in the morning, I'd say it's getting to be around seven p.m. I think we should make a pancake break. I think so too. Waffles break. Pancakes is what? <laughs> Did you call? We're not not talking to you. Oh, okay. Said a, pan, a waffle break. Waffle break. Bentley, do you still have any waffle mix back there? Yes, you know I always have waffle mix. 
Oh, I love you, you big furry freak. Okay. Yeah, he he uh, he stops and makes waffles for everybody. Awesome. Waffle fight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm too tired for waffle fight. I just grab the waffle and I eat it. Um. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you guys were able to eat some waffles. Uh, did you want to talk about anything while you're eating your waffles? Well, I guess everybody, because uh, I wasn't, I don't know, um, I didn't know about the flyer that you just mentioned. Oh, yeah. Because remember, oh, yeah. I was still driving. You guys right. stopped. I well, there. before I, I crashed the VW bus, um, I was trying to tell you guys that uh, Pageant Storm had um, told me that Terrence, the guy who disappeared, and apparently along with uh, the seagull, you know, uh, you know, uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Livingston and um, Ralph, that um, Squad 78 was going to investigate a circus outside of a Neff. And, you know, um, it seems like that might be where Ralph might have been taken. So. You know, that's probably a good place to start. That's the only lead we have. Okay. Well, I guess we should probably uh, plan to go get Ralph. Yeah, maybe we'll find uh, Jonathan Livingston Seagull as well and uh, find out. I mean, we can actually try to call Ralph and see. what well, the last time we talked to Ralph, he was kind of like had a, a blindfold and he was bound. Um, maybe we should give him a call and see if we can talk to him. He didn't have a blindfold on. He just the lights were turned off. It was just dark, yeah. Okay, okay. So we can but do the But still, right, we call. haven't checked in with him in a, yeah. in a minute. So, uh, I will call him. All right. Ralph! Ralph! What? What? Hello? <laughs> Do you know where you are yet? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm sitting in my room of metal bars on wheels, eating Minotaur. <laughs> it's kind of, <clears throat> kind of tough. What do you want? Okay, but that doesn't tell me where you are. Oh, I'm um. I'm, it, it's, it's a giant, I, I, it's weird, it's, uh, it's like the circus, but we're at an arena. I've never been here before. No. They didn't give me any sorts of dipping sauce. Okay. But they let me keep the blood, so that's cool. Good for you. Okay, so then I guess I'll turn and let everyone else know that, uh, okay, Ralph says that it's like the circus, but there's an arena there, and that he's in, uh, he's in a cage with wheels. Uh, ask him if, uh, if Terrence took him there. Have you seen Terrence? Ralph? Yeah, I'm here. Have you seen Terrence? Yeah. Yeah, he made me, uh... He made me fight this uh, Minotaur to the death. And uh, he's, he's, uh, he's acting like he's the victim. <laughs> anyway, he made me fight and uh, then, I, then they threw me back in this cage. They let me, uh, I had to yell at them and fight with them a little bit so I can have something to eat. But uh, I haven't seen him since uh, he, he made me fight. Okay, so what, what are you did you say? <laughs> okay, he said that he's eating a minotaur and he doesn't know, uh, but Terrence made him fight the minotaur. I'm sorry, I kind of like spaced out uh, because. Okay, so it looks like he is at the circus. Like I'm sorry? Yeah. 
So it looks like he might be at that circus that Terrence took him there. Ask him if, um, is, is Jonathan there as well? Did you, Ralph, did you see Jonathan Livingston? Yeah, but he doesn't really seem interested in, uh, doing anything. Apparently he's got to fight too. He's got to fight something. But I don't, I don't know how he'll do since he's just a, a bird. Um, um, okay, so you relay that to us, okay? Okay, uh, yeah, so he does, he does see Jonathan Livingston, uh, but he said that they don't really, they didn't really talk or anything, um, which I guess is kind of weird, but, uh, we, it's nothing that we can do about it until we find out where they are. Uh, so Ralph, is there, was there any... Anything that would help us locate you? Do you still do you think it's the same circus? They just built an arena? No, the the circus always moves. It, it always moves. This place is in one one area. This is this is uh locked down. But I think Terrence is the one calling the shots here. Um I I I I, I I don't know exactly where we're located. Okay. Okay, well, we're still trying to find you. Enjoy uh, your Minotaur. Yeah, yeah, y'all have fun. Okay, so no, he, he said that the circus itself moves, but this place seems like it just stays where it is. And, so and back to, I guess our best bet is to go, uh, to go off the information that uh, Pageant Storm gave us. And Ralph, you've had a long rest since that fight with the Minotaur, so you're you're healed all up again. All right. Well, uh, tell him to hold tight and stay alive, and uh, uh, we're gonna be going to to Petashoka and uh, see if we can find that circus outside of Venef. Um, that's our only lead, so I guess we'll see him whenever we see him. I already got off with him. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, yeah, but I think, uh, yeah, I guess the next step is probably to okay. to, to go to Patashoka, right? Yeah. And and that's, um, and um, Renfrew says, you know, that's, that's only like 15 minutes away from us when we get there. So we, if we go now, we can get there pretty quick. It's 15 minutes from Squad 78? Yes. Oh, okay. You guys got a yeah. headquarters there? Uh, in P in Patashpa, we do. Yeah. Okay, okay, so cool. We, we just have to drive 15 minutes outside of the um, outside of the city, and we'll be at... Cause, because basically, Venef is a, 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 a poor um, suburb of mm -hmm. Patashpa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I've heard of the shanty town. Um. Yeah. Okay. Let us let's, let's do it. Let's let's go there. Okay. So uh, you guys all get into the uh, to the circle and and transport over to what uh, when you arrive you're in what looks like kind of an office building uh, in in uh, Patashpa. Did um, Bentley come with us? Yeah. Uh, no, Bentley had Bentley stayed behind. Uh, he's he's going to be there for the uh, transport. If you guys want to transport back, he can set it back to receive. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and so um, Pageant Storm says, "Okay, I'm going over to the Fifth Dominion to talk to Jericho Organization. Tell them about everything that's happened. I'm going to make a report. So now you don't have to. I'll also tell them about what you found in Darthur City and have them relay that to." Uh, and have them then relay that to the, the heads of his order X as well. So uh, you guys can continue on to rescuing your friend. And Renfrew can go with you if he wants. Sure, sure. So, yeah, just show us around your headquarters and then we'll, uh, we'll probably decide uh, uh, to go out. And so they have, um, for, for uh, transportation, they have um, a van. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like a yeah, big so box I think Richard should drive. 
not true to beer. I, I take that a little personally, but I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I pull the keys out of your hands. <laughs> here, 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 take them. <laughs> All right. But wait a minute, like, we're driving their vehicle now, right? Because we didn't take a vehicle with us. Yeah, Renfrew says, you know what? I'll drive this one. All right, I saw him <laughs> over to Renfrew. Whatever. <laughs> I like to drive. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, you uh, you guys pile up into the van. Uh, Renfrew's driving. You head uh, uh, head down the road. Um, after a 15-minute drive, you see a massive, like, set of circus tents. And uh, and with a big sign overhead that says, that says um, Terrence's Infernal Parade. And so, <laughs> well, I, I guess we found, found, found it. Yeah. yeah. Kind of hit the <laughs> hit the nail on the head there. Yeah. <laughs> so when uh, you you get out of the car and head there, um, there's a, a place to pay uh, in the front. You have to pay to get in. And they have tickets just to see to see the normal sights, but then there's also special tickets to see the the main event of the night. Ooh. Oh, I want some main event tickets. Yeah, I want to do that too. Let's do that. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah, and you guys all ha- have enough coins to be able to buy things in here. Uh, your coins are from his order X, but they're they're good. Um, so you're able to buy uh, you you buy the the full ticket that includes the main event. Can we inquire uh, as to what the main event entails? Oh, oh, yeah. Um, if you missed it last night, the the uh, the lizard man Reptilithor battled a, 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 a massive uh, minotaur and and killed it. Whoa. You should have seen it. I, I look at all my teammates with like, huh, huh. That sounds so cool. That sounds familiar. That sounds I'll take some awesome. tickets. I want tickets hear, to that. Mm-hmm. I'm I hear excited tonight to watch. He's, Fighting his arch enemy, Reptilithor. Never heard of. Who's yeah. who's his arch enemy? I don't know. It's a secret. They don't tell us. No. Well, Ooh. I'm glad that we showed up when we did. I do a quick check of myself to see if I have any weapons showing, and I just kind of rub my cloak a little bit to hide that stuff, and I just go, like, "Yeah, yeah, let's go in. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Let's see it." Well, I, I recommend going to the main event first because uh, you, there's only 10 minutes until that starts, and then you can look at all the, the freak show and everything else after. Mm, yeah, let's let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, that sounds good. Here's my ticket. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Well, then uh, come on in, and uh, the the you you won't you can't miss it. The main uh, the main event is in that big tent over there. And you see a big, uh, a big arena tent, and lots okay. of uh, there's lots of crowds that are starting to pour in that way because they're uh, they know that it's going to start pretty soon. All right, I'm going in. Okay, and we'll stop it there. All right, main event. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, this. I this... have a bad feeling. Yeah, I have a very have a bad, bad feeling. feeling. Never tell me the odds. Um, I liked it. I like that we did a lot of stuff today. And um, I, I like that you moved the action a little bit to what Ralph was doing in the circus. That was an interesting match. Thank you. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was pretty fun. It was cool to involve yeah. us to be the audience members rolling the D6s. That was really cool. Yeah, Ralph could actually use. Uh, <laughs> Ralph of... actually fought. Wow. Ralph can use his abilities without fear of getting any of you guys injured. <laughs> oh yeah. The whole yeah. Point, I can't do anything because it always injures you. all you guys. You're all right, right on top of me. That was and I the crashed inaugural. The car. Uh, that was the inaugural use of that of the whip that you got from that's Baphomet's tentacle. Mm-hmm. I've been trying to use that <clears throat> for a while. So that goes yeah. back into your arm. Yeah. Cool. It's like venom. I can fling it out my arm and pull it in. And... That's really cool. It's just, yeah, it's kind of gross. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I'm still picking like bits of glass off of my robe. <laughs> I can't believe I, I crashed the car. Anyway. Yeah, you did. Yeah, 100, 112 would be really mad if he was still alive. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. He's cool. Not. So, so what's gonna be next? Uh oh yeah yeah so for the Clive Barker podcast next uh we're going to uh, do um 
a commentary on uh, on Day of the Dead. So I don't know if any of you guys want to join. We're going to watch Day mm-hmm. of the Dead and comment on it. I think that might that's that's it as far as I know. We'll have a classic yeah. commentary episode. A classic commentary for Candyman Three, right? <clears throat> what yeah. what day are y'all going to do that? Um, uh, we haven't decided yet. Uh, if you guys want to throw a, any dates. Uh, yeah. So this episode is going to be appearing next weekend. So it'd be the weekend after that. Well, and this podcast having no beginning will have no end. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. You can chat with us on our Facebook BarkerCast listeners group, our Facebook page, Twitter, or our new Discord server. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Opening music by Ray Norrish, end credit music by Matt Furness. Thanks for listening.